Okay, find two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible. I said it's a very easy one. Here's what I need to think of. My f of x. I don't need a picture in this case. It's not a real world situation. Your f of x is always what you are trying to maximize or minimize. What am I trying to maximize or minimize here? A product of two numbers, correct? So x times y. Because once as large as possible, so I'm trying to maximize the product. You agree with that? And here's the problem. Two variables. So you have to come up with a factoid. Well, they tell me the sum is 20, correct? So I know x plus y is 20. I'm going to use this to get rid of a variable. Usually get rid of y. So solve for y, I get 20 minus x. You with me there? So I'm going to plug that in for y. So f of x is x, 20 minus x. And that right there is usually the hardest part. But the first step, a lot of people get confused, they try to write down too many equations. Write down your f of x is what you are trying to maximize and minimize. That's the first thing you should write down. And then see if you need to eliminate a variable. Now that I have a function, okay, I've come up with an equation, I've eliminated the variable, I need to use the first derivative test. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that so I don't use the product rule. That is 20x minus x squared. So its derivative is 20 minus 2x. Set that equal to 0. So 20 equals 2x. x equals 10. Yeah? Number line it, but here's where you have to be careful. Here's where a lot of you, a lot of you, with the exception of maybe two, three people, didn't take into account the quiz. Do I have endpoints? 0 and 20. If they have to add up to be 20, they have to be at least 0, no more than 20, right? So I have endpoints of 0 and 20. Do not go past that. And the thing that those are important because, remember, endpoints can be maxes and mins, right? Quite a few of you on that quiz. Number one, I gave you endpoints. Didn't even bother checking them. They were definitely maxes and mins. But so now I'm going to put 10 on there. Pick a number between 0 and 10. Pick a number. 5. 5, I would have gone with 1 for sure. 5, I get what? Positive. Positive. Pick a number here. 11. 11, plug it in. Negative. Negative. So I'm increasing, decreasing. So right away, 10 is a max, right? You see how 0 and 20 are mins? Yes. Yes? Because I could ask this exact same question and say, when is it at a minimum? My answers would be 0 and 20. Of course, I have to check that. But you see what I'm saying here? If you don't have those endpoints, you may not be answering the question, depending on how it's phrased. So 10 is what x is, right? But I'm asked for find two numbers. So what do I do? Go to the, the equation you made. Okay, my little factoid, right? Y is 20 minus 10. So Y is also 10. So my two numbers are 10 and 10. I'm not going to do a comma. I had to interpret my answers. I had to find what they're asking. That's the biggest issue for a lot of these problems right here, guys, is the AP test might ask you to find the dimensions or value of X, but they might ask you to find the area. You have to make sure you're answering the question completely. Lots of decoys on multiple choice for these. Lots of decoys. Questions? Like I said, that was a